Hi there, and welcome to episode four of the Builder's Office podcast, where each week we endeavour to bring as much information as possible to you guys so that you guys can get the best building experience possible in front of you. So today, really, really important stuff, seeing all this stuff going on around Australia over the past 12, 18 months. Lots of floods, it's a really big thing and can create havoc in homes. So I wanted to have a bit of a chat to you today about floods and how with with the right things in design and post build in landscaping and certain things like that, you can ensure that your homes aren't going to flood. Now, lately I've seen a number of places, especially up around Shepparton, that's having a lot of flooding and they're trying to, oh, well, up there, it's getting to the point where it's starting to peak at uh, 1974 flood levels. So 2022, we're getting some awesome stuff happening. So once again, always try your best to try and keep on top of everything that's going on around you. But one of the things here is the flooding on homes. Now, I know a lot of builders around, they do their best to try to mitigate some of these issues. One of the ways that they do try to do this is by encouraging every homeowner when they're looking at their home post build to encourage them to follow some some guidelines that are set out, one in a really nice little document called the Guide to Standards and Tolerances. Now that was first published, I can't remember when that was first published, but it was first published a while ago. I think the current one, and that it d- does get updated just like the like the Australian standards, it does get updated just like those. But what it actually does is it goes through some standards on what is acceptable finishes on homes. But not only does it do that, it does some other stuff for finishing your home on the outside to make sure that you don't get any water ingress into your homes and you don't get any further damage caused by water build up around your home. And there's some pretty pretty good things that you can do when it comes to the outside of your home. And most builders that I know, they are supplying a couple of a couple of really important documents post build. So part of handover packs and, and the such. So they're supplying them with documents from the CSIRO building technical files. And part of those files goes through landscaping post build to ensure that you don't end up with a subsidence of dwellings and very similar things just like that. So what you can actually do is you can as long as you get these documents then you can make sure that you follow the guidelines and some of the guidelines go around just ensuring that you have adequate fall away from your house there's depending on whether it's on a slab or whether it's subfloor there are different conditions and different rules that need to be met one with getting underneath the house and whether there's adequate drainage but the biggest thing is adequate drainage away from the house i can give you a really good example i was around at a friend's house just a couple of days ago and around the house it is paved essentially if you have the inside of the house the level of the inside of the house sits here the level of the outside of the house was sitting essentially at the same height with what happened then seeing it actually in person i tried to get some videos of it but it just wasn't working because for this to go out onto uh, into the video capture area and for you to be able to see what's actually going on because of the amount of water that we've had just in melbourne in the last couple of days i think it was somewhere around 100 and something odd millimeters of rain came down the water that got into the house essentially because of the height of the concrete on the outside of the house to the inside of the house water was just flowing straight through so the ceiling and the flashings around the windows were sufficient which allowed a lot of water to get straight into the house so it got into the house underneath the floating floor inside the house so i remember just walking into the house and feeling like i was floating uh, because the water got underneath the floating floor and as it sounds like it was floating so it met the definition of floating floor very quickly which was quite worrying for the owners of the house felt for them in that instance ses came around they did what they could but it all came down to not adequate drainage concrete outside and inside being not separated enough to to ensure that ceiling was inside the ceiling of and ensuring water doesn't get into the house from inside to outside was adequate as well as well as the flashings around windows and ceiling in that sense as well so there's a lot of things that a builder can do to ensure that you don't get any of that it's a discussion that you definitely want to have with your builder about what you're doing what's adequate drainage what is going to be the best solution for our home whether it is on a slab whether it's on a subfloor and these are discussions that you really should be having with a builder and if you own a building going and having a chat with all the guys around seeing what's being done what's acceptable practice I guess you could call it. So when it comes to it, it's really good to get into that and really have good crack 
at making sure that you do have a one an adequate step down so when it comes to design okay we can design a home when it comes to designing the landscape and making sure that that's all going to get adequate drainage whether it is with aggie drains or hard drains through concrete and drainage systems you really want to get on top of that we're seeing it evidenced massively right now so that's when it comes to the aspect of the landscaping up against the house you really want to have a 75 mil step down and it was practice but i'm hearing of some some changes to the nccs right now which is stating that we have to have a certain height a minimum maximums sort of like stairs when it comes to that they're also doing some other other changes now at one stage we did have a minimum 75 mil within a meter of a house we have to have fall running away so if you've got concrete right up against your house and it doesn't have 75 mil of fall in that first meter running away from your house well leaving yourself wide open to possible issues. So you gotta be really careful with these sorts of things. I hope that that is a little bit enlightening. I also wanted to touch on the other aspect of it when it comes to design of homes with roofing systems, roofing structures that can create some issues when it does come to drainage as well. One of the design features that a lot of people I was actually looking at a, I got asked a question just the other day, I got sent a photo and it was of somebody's balcony. Now they were in a city, so they had another building hard up against them. But on this building that was hard up against their balcony, it had a pipe coming out through the wall. They were sitting there wondering, why is this neighbor's property, with all this rain that we're getting, why is all this water coming out of that pipe? It's never happened before. Why is it coming out of that pipe and why is it coming down onto my balcony? It shouldn't this be piped unfortunately because there was a, a box gutter and that's the drainage system that's being used and employed on that roof next door they have to have a overflow and it is actually regulation now that there are meant to be overflows on any kind of spouting and box gutters any kind of drainage system on a roof has to have overflows so the overflow pipe is one that comes out of the box gutter slash sump area wherever there might be close to a rain head or something like that now the rain head is going to be the part that is basically the box that sits on the side of the wall and has it has the downpipe coming out of it with that there is going to be an overflow a lot of rain heads they incorporate the the overflow into the rain head itself when you've got sumps in box gutters and sumps is basically where a box gutter runs into another box that goes underneath all the water falls into that it has another pipe that sits in there that if anything happens with the main drainage from that sump it's got to have something else just in case it gets blocked and that's what the overflow is for. And that overflow is just coming straight out and is fully exposed and it's designed to be exposed so that you can see if there is an issue. Because the question that got posed to me was, why isn't this pipe? Why is this open? Why is it draining into my balcony? And it's like that so that if there is an issue, you're going to be able to see it straight away and you're going to be able to get it sorted. You wouldn't want that to happen too often. Uh, and one of the things that does happen is leaves and debris and stuff like that get into downpipes block them and especially with box gutters they get blocked water flows straight back into the house i've seen it happen a number of times i'm actually going to have a look at another property on monday for a previous client of mine they have a, a second property or a couple of properties now in a city melbourne we're going to have a look at that and that's certainly going to be interesting because they've got some drainage issues going on there funnily enough rain brings on all of this so we're starting to see more of it probably a lot more insurance claims at the moment as well which is a bit scary for everybody that being said yeah it really comes down to the design box gutters are a challenge look standard gutters standard spouting they can be an issue but there are some regulations around that with overflows on the actual spouting and the design of the spouting as well so be aware that all has to be in there as part of the regulations we have to abide by it if people aren't abiding by it now it can create a lot of issues for homeowners with flooding on the inside of the house because water can get in very easily what does water do always finds the path of least resistance to get where it wants to go so it wants to wiggle its way through it'll wiggle its way through without a problem so be aware very easily done can happen quite easily so it's a challenge but we would everyone's doing their best they certainly are and i hope that that little bit of information will really help another part that comes in between there's one area in between house design and your landscape designs and that is locating the house in relation to trees if you're having to keep trees the other aspect is planting new trees and depending on what types they are where they're going to be in relation to the house how close they're going to be to the house what kind of foliage is going to come off them and land on your roof gutter guards are a great thing yes but they can also create issues because gutter guards while they keep leaves out they if there's anything else blowing up onto the roof dirt silt anything like that that's going to get into the whole system and and block it up which luckily enough one of my family members found that out with lots of moss lichen all that sort of thing 
building up on their roof, ending up with some few little dark patches in their roof. And with the rain that happened lately, they started to see some of that come out more. So when it comes to it, do we want our houses to flood? No, we don't. Do we want the water to be coming in? No, we don't. As long as we're thinking about it right from the get-go, we can find ways to really mitigate it. If you're coming into a home that's already built, do an assessment. Ask somebody to come out and have a look, have a chat about it, see what you can do. You, you'd be surprised at what you can find going through and doing all these sorts of things. So hopefully you do find a way to be able to do this. It'd be really good. If you have any other questions, if any of the information that I've talked about is incorrect, correct me. No worries. I don't have a problem with being corrected. If you're an expert and you want to have a chat about it as well, I would love to have a chat with you. If you have any other questions that are burning through your pockets, you can definitely email us at thebuildersoffice101 at gmail.com and I'll get that and I'll either respond to you or bring the question onto the podcast and we'll have a good chat about it. If you're watching the video, you'll be able to see behind me a project up on one screen and the business name for us at New Realm Homes. That's my company. We do a lot of a lot of new homes and currently doing a couple of renovations, which is really nice. Bit of a change from what we normally do and that's us. You can check us out anytime you want. So it's been great having a chat with you today. I hope that it's been enlightening. And if you do have any questions, drop us a line. We'll be able to get back to you and I hope you guys have a cracking day and I'll see you next week.